guys, my name is Peter Van Camp. I'm a fourth year electrical mechanical engineering technology student at RIT. Uh, this will be the first video in a series of videos to show how to design a robotic work cell using a Fanag robot controller, Allen Bradley PLC, and Maple Systems HMI. What you see here is a simple pick and place program where I'm able to start, stop the robot, fault, and reset faults on the robot all from an HMI without needing to touch the teach bed. Here will be a simple example of how I can start the robot. From here, now I can hold the robot. I can then resume the program. I can fault the robot. I can then reset the faults and resume the program again. Hope you find this useful. In this section, I'm going to show how to set up the system parameters on the FANUC robot controller side to set up external communication over Ethernet IP uh, with either an Allen Bradley PLC or really any PLC uh, in that matter. So first we're going to set up, or we're going to go to the system config menu. So we're going to go menu, we're going to hit next, and we're going to go to system config. So the main two things we're going to worry about is first the UI signals, so number seven. Uh, we wanna make sure this is set to true. This allows an external device to um, trigger these bits in order to start and stop the robot. Next, we're gonna go down to 41. And on the way down, you'll see there are a few other bits here. So these digital outputs you can set, so these are all used to make the PLC, I guess, quote unquote, smarter. Um, so you can have a HMI reading that will show which mode the controllers in or if the e-stop's been pressed or anything like that. So there's a lot of um, variability I guess you can use here to make your HMI and PLC look a little better. So if you continue down to 41, this is where it says remote slash local setup. So we want to switch this to remote and this is going to allow an external device to start and stop the robot. Uh, if we scroll down a little more, that was really it. So this is just your UOP assignment that doesn't really matter for right now. Next, we want to set up the host communications. We want to set up the IP address of the robot. So to do that, we're going to go to menu again. We're going to go to setup. We're going to go over to host communication. There's a few options here, but we want to set up the TCP IP. So the first one on the menu. So we're going to hit F3 for detail. And then there's a few options you can fill in here. So the first one, you set up the robot name. So mine's pretty generic, just robot. Um, then you can set up the IP address of the robot. So you want to make sure your IP address subnet matches the um, subnet of your external devices. So these first two octet or first three octets should be the same as your PLC, HMI, and PC that you're connecting to it with. Then your subnet mask. So this is generically just triple two fifty five, and that's going to be the same on your external devices as well. Uh, next, you're going to have to set up the IP addresses of the devices you want to communicate with. So in this case, I have the robot set up to communicate with my PLC, which, and that's the IP address of the PLC. And then I also have it set up to communicate with my PC, uh, and that's the IP address or static IP address I set on my computer. Now, once you set these up, you have to initiate them. So you can go to next and you can hit initiate, and that's gonna set your IP address of the robot Another way to do this is the power cycle, but this is a faster option. Next, what you can do is once you have your external device IP address set, you can ping them uh, in order to make sure they can see each other on the network. So if you hit F4, I can ping the PLC, and right there you'll see that it succeeded. Now my PC, and this or right now is not connected to the network, so the robot cannot see it. So if I try to ping this one, it'll say it timed out. So that kind of, that's, that's what you will see if the robot cannot see your device on the network. Next, we want to set up the adapter configuration. So if we go to menu, IO, and Ethernet IP, if your robot does not show Ethernet IP as an option on the IO menu, that means you do not have the option installed on your robot and you'll have to contact FANUC and purchase a pack code. Um, and just a warning, the pack codes for Ethernet IP is about $1,500, so they're not cheap. 
So if you do have it though, you can continue watching. So you hit Ethernet IP, and now you're gonna have a list of different uh, connections that you can have on your robot. So in this case, my first one, I have an adapter. So if you purchase the scanner option, you can also have a, um, you can select this as a scanner rather than an adapter. On uh, this case, we'll continue with adapter, and then you can enable it, and this will say if it's running or not. So in this case, mine is running. Um, to configure your adapter, so when you first enter the screen, it's gonna show all of them as false, and none of them will be running. So you're gonna hover over the one you wanna use, and you're gonna hit F4 for config. Now it's gonna display a few other options you need to configure. So your input and output size in words, that's the amount of data you're going to transmit between the robot and the PLC. So one word is equal to 16 bits. So in this case, I'm sending four 16-bit words back and forth from the PLC to the robot. Um, that's the default size, so and that has worked well for me. There may be options or there may be times where you need to transmit more data than that and then you can up that to whatever you want, 10, 15, doesn't really matter. Um, down here where it says scanner IP, this will auto populate. Uh, so you will not have to set these. So as you can see, mine is connected to the PLC right now. So it auto populates the PLC IP address. This API, so this references the speed information is transferring. So in the PLC, I set up a, uh, the requested packet interval as 30 milliseconds. So this is also um, auto populating to that. Next. I'll uh, bring you guys over to the Studio 5000 to show how to set up a generic Ethernet module um, on Studio 5000 and hook up with the robot. I'll show you guys how to set up the Ethernet module on Studio 5000. First thing we're going to do is just to make sure we have network communication between the uh, PC and the robot. So we can go to Command Prompt and we can just ping the IP address of the robot. All right, so we have communication there. And then I'm also going to ping the IP address to the PLC just to make sure we're talking there as well. All right, so we're good there. So I'm going to exit out. Next, I'm going to go to Studio 5000. So I already have a file made here that I've been using. So when you come on here, just make sure you have your communication path set. Um, just in here, you can go into your who active. And you can make sure that you have your project path set to there. Next, we're going to do is we're going to search for a generic Ethernet module. So you go over here, your Ethernet connection. You can right click, hit new module. And you can search for generic. So right here, having a generic Ethernet module, I can hit create. And this will give you a bunch of options uh, for what to fill in to for your connection with the robot. So first thing I want to point out here is this. It's going to default to data-dint. You want to change that to data-int. And I'm going to cancel out of this just because I have a module already made with all the correct information in it. So uh, I'm gonna give it a robot a name, so my mind's pretty generic. Uh, again, like I said before, data-int. Then you're gonna put in your IP address of the robot. Again, make sure your first three octets match that of your PC and of the PLC, and then your identifier, that dot .17, is different from each of the other devices. Uh, then you're gonna set up your assembly instances. So this I'll get more into in the section where we map our digital and UOP IO um, in the Ether IP config menu on the robot, um, but your size, that correlates directly to when you um, did your configuration of the adapter. So in there, we set that we wanted to transfer four 16-bit words back and forth from the robot. So in this, we're gonna do the same exact thing. So it's gonna default to, I think, about 125 and 124. So you want to change these to four because it will not connect if the PLC thinks it's sending more information than the robot's actually sending. So these are all also available on the Ethernet IP manual um, from FANUC. It'll show you these as the generic 
um, set up and that's what I'm using because it functions pretty well. Next you're going to go over to connection. So the unicast connection that's totally fine. Then you're going to see your RPI, so your request a packet interval. Um, you'll remember from the uh, setup on the Fanic robot side in the adapter config menu it was or it auto populated to 30 milliseconds so this is where that's from it'll default to 10 milliseconds i just changed to 30 just because i don't need it to be that fast um, then you'll see module info this will auto populate when you connect to the robot over the network so now that that's all set up i hit okay and i can turn put our controller online to make sure everything connects properly So now I'm in run mode on the PLC, and you see I don't have any errors here. So I'm going to double click the module. And you can see right here, status is running. So that means everything connected fine. And if I go to module info, you can see everything auto populated there as well. So now I want to show you how the inputs and outputs come into Studio 5000 from the module. So you can scroll up, you can go to controller tags, double click. And this will show you all of the input output slots that I have on the PLC itself. And then in the bottom here, it'll come in that generic Ethernet module. So I'll have my robot inputs, my robot outputs. So if I just go into my robot inputs, go down to the data. Now you'll see four 16 bit words that are transmitting. So this corresponds directly uh, to what we set up in the Ethernet module and the robot side. So if we were to set up eight 16 bit words, there would be eight of these, so zero through seven. So if you dig into these, so I'm going to show you this one because this one I already set up. So these are my user operator panel bits that I map from the robot. Um, so these are all in the second word, and these will transmit over these registers. So in the next video, I will show how to uh, figure out where the robot outputs are mapping into the PLC. Also, be aware that a robot output is going to come into the PLC as an input, and PLC outputs are going to go into the robot as an input. So it's a little bit weird there, but you just got to wrap your head around it, um, and it's not too bad. So, all right, I think that's it for now. Next video, I'll show how to map the inputs.